Hi, I'm Josh. Hi, and I'm Tara. Welcome to Redemption Church. We're so honored to bring our Sunday service into your home, wherever you are watching right now around the world. Whether your country is in lockdown or you're in isolation or whatever is happening around you amidst this chaos, know this, Jesus is in control. It's an honor and privilege for us to bring you worship and word all around Jesus Christ today. We believe there's no distance in the spirit. We believe you'll be ministered right where you are, in your homes around the world. Hi, and welcome to Redemption Church today for our Sunday service. It is gonna be an amazing time as we gather together. You know, there is no distance in the spirit. And although right now, I don't know what is going on in your nation around the world. And we know that over 28 nations are tuned in right now to watch this. All over the world, I don't know what's going on in your governments. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what your situation is that you're going through. Uh, but I do know this, that whether you're practicing social distancing or you're in complete lockdown, we are not going to be distancing ourselves spiritually. We might not be gathering physically, but we are gathering online. That we are actually practicing what the Bible speaks about as a gathering of blessing under our high priest right now as we gather online. Um, it is an honor and privilege to be able to talk to you about Jesus. And as we talk about Jesus today, I know that most of us are actually sitting in circumstances where we are restricted in our space. We are maybe locked down permanently, like uh, not allowed to even go out unless you go and get food or uh, medicine, not being allowed to actually go to work. Maybe you are allowed to leave your house, but under strict conditions. I do know this. I know that we are experiencing constriction. We are experiencing restraint. We are experiencing what it is to be locked down and have our space or our freedom taken from us. And I know this. I know that this is not something new, that this has happened in the world before. And in fact, in the Bible, we actually see that this happened to some of the people being written about that people had to literally be uh, restricted to a place or a location or their house for various reasons. All of them were under negative circumstances, not positive circumstances. Restriction naturally is not a positive thing. But I wanna let you know, as you're gonna see today, God can use this. Not that God has sent this. God does not send viruses. After the cross of Jesus Christ, there is no such need of punishing sin because sin has been punished. There is no such thing as sending a curse into this world because all curse has been taken by Christ. We know that the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. His mandate is to kill. His mandate is to steal. His mandate is to destroy. But our heavenly Father, the almighty God's mandate is salvation. And so we know God doesn't send this virus, but we know that in spite of this virus, God can turn the circumstance around for good. One of the things I know is that we've been so busy in our lives, I'm pretty sure now you are getting into a very reflective space, looking at your life and evaluating all that used to be so important that now is not that important. For some of you, exercise was something we avoided. <laughs> For some of you, exercise and going uh, for exercise was like, oh, no, no, no. And now that you are maybe confined to your space, you're dreaming of exercise. You're dreaming of a walk. You're dreaming of a bike ride. You're dreaming of getting out from the house. For some of you, maybe, maybe you, you dreamed about things that just right now don't really matter. Your clothes, how trendy you are, what brand you're wearing. Uh, you know, these are not things that matter in this time. Material things in a time of crisis, if they are not of use, it's almost like we realize they really didn't matter. Maybe marketing and our identity was wrapped up in what people thought of us. But now in a crisis, we start to recognize what really matters is different. So now you're in a reflective space. Now you're going and you're asking yourself deep questions. What is my real purpose on life? Will I actually get through this? Will I actually ever get out of this? <laughs> you know, our nation is about to go into a 21-day lockdown. And so we are filming this because we know that 
we need to give you the good news of the gospel for as long as we can. We believe that's going to be through this. So we are recording. I've been recording all day for over five days being able to tell you about Jesus because we want every day you to be able to get the good news of the gospel, the good news of the light of Jesus in your dark home, wherever you are. But, but you might be right now in a lockdown situation and you think, I don't even know if I'm going to get out of this. I mean, myself and my wife are going to be locked down in our home with our three dogs. Yes, three dogs. Not all my dogs, but somehow ended up being my dogs. Um, and our three kids. And our eldest kid is nine. So we have basically got six puppies running around our house. Pray for us. <laughs> we need your prayer. Um, and for those of us around me in my house, pray for those around me in my house as, as I have to. Uh, no, but you know what? I, 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 I realize that we might be in a very stressful environment being locked down, but I want to show you that God can actually work in such a supernatural way that you will see yourself and whoever is in your dwelling come out on the other side of this viral attack on our world that is so devastating. And I need to say this, listen to your government, listen to your leaders, comply with their orders, because why? They have your best interests at heart and they want us to work with them so that we can help each other come out on the other side of this. So we as a church, we believe in, in, in following the order of our presidents, our prime ministers around the world, don't, don't try now and, and break the system. No, comply. But I want to let you know that we can see God use this time for good, that you can come out of this on the other side stronger, better. And I believe you will. Why? Because I see this over and over in Scripture. I, I know some of you are grappling right now with an identity crisis. How do I know that? Because some of you have been avoiding confronting things in your life because we keep so busy. In this world, we can be busy and we were so busy nonstop. If we're not busy out there, when we get home, we're busy on our phones. If we're not busy at work, we're busy here, busy there, busy here, constantly having our minds occupied with so much going on, what we have and are we looking after it and what we don't have and how are we getting it? Busy, 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 busy. Now we sit and we're faced with ourselves, maybe in isolation, maybe right now even you're confronting the biggest crisis of your life. Maybe you're dealing with depression like you've never dealt with in your life. Maybe you're dealing with an identity crisis like you've never dealt with in your life. Fear, rejection, hopelessness. Whatever it is that you're dealing with, I wanna show you there's a way to deal with this that you overcome in the midst of a lockdown, in the midst of confinement, in the midst of crisis, God is gonna use this time for good. Your good, your good. So we're gonna go right now to a famous story in scripture. If you don't have a Bible, hey, take out your smartphone, your iPhone, or just follow along with us. The scriptures will be on the screen. We're gonna go to a famous story, the story of Gideon. And what I find fascinating is God appears to Gideon and he says to Gideon, mighty man of valor. Gideon, you mighty man of valor. And Gideon, who is not at that time a mighty man of valor. At that time, Gideon is the least of the least in his nation, which is the least. In other words, of all the people in his country, his tribe, his family is the least. And of all the people in his tribe, his family, he believes he's the least. What he's saying is this. When you're looking for a mighty man, God, you really have come to the bottom, <laughs> the bottom of the barrel, the bottom of the bucket. You really are desperate if you're calling me mighty. And my, maybe this confinement is exposing to you your weaknesses, your fears. Maybe right now you're dealing with panic and anxiety. Maybe right now, even physically, you're feeling ill and you're panicking. Do I have this virus? What will happen to me? Will I make it? See, so what's so interesting is God doesn't say to Gideon, oh, you're not the least of the least. God doesn't speak to that because he's not speaking to Gideon based on the identity Gideon has naturally. Naturally, Gideon is the least of the least. Naturally, 
Gideon is speaking fact, his truth. And even in this exchange, God sends angels, God sends her, sends so many signs to Gideon, people to Gideon, angels to Gideon, to try and convince Gideon he is who God says he is. That he's not a mighty man of valor because he's that naturally, but because God declares it over him. So Gideon actually goes and says, uh, I'm not these things. And you know what's so funny? is even if God was to tell you a truth about you today, even the highest truth about you today, like right now you're listening to me speak and you think, I've never really given church a go. I've never really been a religious, religious person, but in this moment, in this time, I'm giving this God conversation a chance. But you don't know what I go through. And even if I said to you right now, God says, you are powerful. You are strong. You are are not depressed, but I will help you overcome depression. You are a person of purpose. You have value. You might even say to me, like Gideon does, throughout Judges chapter six, he argues with God. Do you know what's so funny? When you have an identity issue and God declares your identity is not what you think it is. In other words, God says, you're mighty and you say, but I'm not. You will argue with God about your identity. You will argue with God that it, is an e that it is even God. Like I'm talking to an angel, Gideon is actually arguing with an angel whether God is saying it to him. Isn't that interesting? So what you don't need today is a sign of what God says about you. You need revelation as to why what God says about you is truth. Why you have a different identity. Not that you have a different identity because so many people will speak positive words over you. Oh, you're a good person. Oh, don't worry. You'll overcome this. And you're like, yes, you're telling me something, but I don't know why I would overcome this. Why would I be a powerful person when I'm naturally weak, a mighty person when I'm naturally soft and never a victor? Why, uh, why would I be happy if I'm always depressed? Why would I be someone who has a future when I can't even function right now? Don't tell me good things. Tell me why to believe those good things. So we're gonna jump into this story where Gideon has been fighting with God all this time. Read from the beginning of chapter six. And I wanna take you to a critical moment where Gideon is in a confined space. He's actually in hiding because his enemies have camped to destroy his people. And he's actually in hiding and he's having this conversation with God. And he says in verse 36, God, if you really would save Israel by my hand, like you say, I'm mighty is what God said. You'll be mighty, Gideon, and I'm gonna use you to lead your nation against your enemy for victory. He says, if you really are gonna use me to do a mighty work, right? He says, I'm gonna put a fleece of wool on the ground. If there is dew on the fleece only, and it is dry on the ground all around, I will know that you will save Israel by my hand as you have said. So, God, if I am really who you say I am, and you are gonna do what you said you would do, I'm gonna take this fleece, I'm gonna lay it like this carpet right now that I'm standing on, I'm gonna lay a fleece on the ground, and I'm going to come back later, right? I'm gonna go to sleep, and when I wake up, I wanna see that the fleece is wet, but the ground around it is dry. Now, anyone here who understands how dew works is dew doesn't fall on a spot. If you've ever been to a field uh, in the morning after dew has fallen that night, you will notice that it covers the complete space. You can actually see footsteps. If you walk, you'll actually look behind and see footsteps because the dew is so consistent over the area. So what Gideon is asking for is a miracle, but he's saying, let this fleece be wet and the ground be dry. So what happens? He goes to sleep, he wakes up, and the Bible says in verse 38, and it 
was so. He rose early the next morning and he squeezed the fleece together. Have you ever squeezed a rag or a, a towel that has been dropped in a pool or a bath? It just comes, water comes gushing out and he squeezes it so much that he gets a bowl full of water. And Gideon says to God, God, please don't be angry with me. Let me speak just one more time. He says, let me test you one more time. But this time I'm gonna take this fleece that is wet and I wanna lay it on the ground again in the same place tonight. So this last night he wakes up and he found the fleece wet in the ground dry and he says, now I wanna place this fleece on the ground and I wanna wake up in the morning and I need the ground to be wet and the fleece to be dry. So he takes a wet fleece, places it down on dry ground, goes to sleep, and he says, if it's really you, God, let this fleece be dry and the ground be wet. Isn't it interesting? Why is this miracle what he asks for? Why put a fleece out? This, this is so strange if you think about it in today's day and age, because you go and say this this doesn't relate to me. Oh, no, no, this is exactly for you because I want to explain to you why. See, Gideon has an identity crisis and God speaks a fresh identity over him, one he cannot earn, one he cannot work for, one that's not in his family, in his genealogy. It's, it's nowhere around him that he's mighty, that he's powerful, and that he can do something significant. Ned alone lead his entire nation into battle to conquer the greatest enemy they've ever faced at that time. Why can I do this, God? Well, you know what a fleece is? If you look at the original text, the fleece there is a lamb's coat, a woolen coat. Like if you were to look at a woolen fleece, that's what he puts out. And he says it first needed to be wet and the ground dry. The Bible tells us the Lamb of God came into the world to take away the sin of the world. Do you know that at that moment, John the Baptist prophesies and recognizes Jesus? Behold the Lamb who comes. What's the first thing John does with him is he baptizes Jesus in the River Jordan into water because water there is a picture of holiness and the Holy Spirit and righteousness. It is a picture of God's blessing and favor. And what's interesting is all throughout scripture, dryness is always related to sin and death and cursing. Nothing grows in deserts or very few things grow, but things grow so easily next to water. Wherever there's dryness, there is death. And it's so interesting that Gideon's first request is that the lamb's fleece be saturated wet and the Bible tells us he wakes up and the fleece is so full of water he can squeeze a bowl full of water out of it that is soaking full of water but the ground around the fleece was dry and he says God don't be angry with me please please don't be angry with me because I, I need one more miracle before I can believe what you say about me before I know why I am who you say I am. I now need to go back to sleep and I need to wake up and find that the fleece is dry and the ground is wet. What is he saying? I need the holy lamb of God that is saturated with righteousness now to send, impute, to impart his righteousness into the dry ground and the dry ground's sin and death be sent into the Holy Lamb. It isn't good enough that Jesus came into the world holy and righteous, perfect and pleasing. It isn't good enough that he is a healer and a miracle provider because the truth is, what do we do about our identity? Gideon wakes up after the first miracle and he says, God, please don't be angry, but it's not enough. And he was right. It was not enough for him to receive the identity 
that God wanted to put on him because it was not good enough that the lamb was holy and the world was evil. No, no, no. No, for a new identity in the world, the holiness of the lamb needs to get sent into the world and the sin of the world needs to get sent into the lamb. See, Gideon didn't have an encounter with a fleece in the cave. He didn't even have an encounter with Jew in the cave. He had an encounter with the cross of Jesus Christ. Christ, the gospel in the cave. And when he saw that not only was the lamb holy, but that the lamb had taken its holiness and imputed its holiness into the world and took the sin of the world into itself, he wakes up after the second miracle, after witnessing that, and he says, let's go to war. I believe I am who God says I am because I have a revelation of what Jesus has done for me. That I'm not holy because of me. I'm not holy because of my family and my lineage naturally, nor my possessions, nor my natural ability. No, I am holy, righteous, and I have a supernatural purpose because of what my Savior has done for me. We know that when we are confined in a small space, but we have an encounter with our Jesus, we change. We don't change for the worse, we get stronger, we get better. You know what I'm believing? I'm believing people watching this right now are being ministered to by the Holy Spirit all around the world, that they are no longer who the devil says they are. They are no longer what their past says they are, but they are what Jesus has paid the price for them to be the identity God declares of you, that he has a plan for you, a hope and a purpose for you, that you will not end off worse in your life, that you will not go backwards, but out of this, you'll have an encounter with your Lord, your Savior, the almighty Jesus Christ, and you will receive the words he has been speaking to you in your life saying, you are precious, you are valuable, and you have a purpose and a plan. You are going to be used mightily by God, because of Jesus. And so wherever you're watching right now around the world, I wanna encourage you, make sure you use this time to bring your fleece, your Jesus, and not just your fleece holy, but allow your holy Jesus to receive all that you've done, all the sin, all the issues, all the problems, all the cares that you have, cast them on Jesus in this time. Every day you engage with the good news of the gospel of Jesus right here on Redemption TV, on our platforms all over the world. Every day we're gonna be sending you teaching about what Jesus means to you. Make sure that you have your fleece in your cave, in your confinement, because you know what? You're gonna experience change good change, transformation. You will come out on the other side of these lockdowns and these, these isolation periods and these distancing periods, drawing near to Jesus. And when you draw near to Jesus, all who drew near to Jesus got healed. And whenever you see in scripture, someone came to Jesus and said, I'm in need. I believe you are my answer. Their lives were changed. Yours is going to be changed too. We're gonna pray a prayer right now called the prayer of salvation. Simply put, a prayer where you declare with your heart that Jesus Christ died for you, that he rose again for you, that you in your heart believe and you speak it with your mouth. And the Bible says you are saved, not for a moment, but for the rest of eternity, you are bought by the blood of Jesus. He is your savior. He is your fleece. He is your transformation. You know, Gideon went out after this with a very, very small army, 300 in fact, the original 300 in fact. And it's believed the army they faced was well into the hundreds of thousands. This is a documented battle in history. Gideon didn't even actually have to fight. He led the army, gave a charge, and the enemy actually turned against themselves in confusion you could almost argue was the greatest victory numerically almost in, in, in history. Definitely one of the most. But Gideon wasn't mighty and he wasn't brave because the whole time God is telling him, you are a mighty man, he's saying, no, I'm not. That's not bravery. 
But when you encounter the cross of Jesus Christ, you change into who God says you are. We're gonna pray this prayer right now. Pray with us. Repeat after me, say, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. By your blood that was shed and your body that was broken, all my sin, all my sickness has been paid for in full. I am healed. I am righteous. I have a future and a hope because of you, Jesus. I declare you're my Lord. You're my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. If you prayed that prayer right now for the very first time, comment below, let us know. Or you can go in our website, Redemption's website, and you will see a new believers button. Press that button. That'll take you to a page full of free resource we want to bless you with, telling you all about this Jesus that you have just come to receive as your Lord and Savior. What we're also going to do together right now is something called communion. This is incredibly powerful. If you've never done it before, you can do it with us right now. Simply put, we want you to have an encounter with the cross in the cave, with the fleece in the cave, because wherever you are, no matter what you're facing, whether you're in a hospital bed or you're watching us right now, anywhere in the world, we want to introduce you and we want to connect you and we want you to place your faith in the cross of Jesus Christ. So if you can, just go and get a piece of bread or a wafer or a cracker, anything that you can declare over and speak over. So you need a cracker and a wafer, bread, anything like that will do, and some juice. We're gonna give you a moment. You can even press pause right now to get that. Come back to this feed, gather around this good news. Because you know why? As you do this, you eat healing unto your body you drink redemption unto yourself. You bring life, you bring light, you bring hope, and you bring the mightiness of God into your life. No matter how weak you are, you're mighty because your God is mighty. So can you take this bread, this cracker? I want you to hold it up and repeat after me. Say, this is the body of Jesus, which is broken for me. Every stripe on His body Every whip, every lash was for my healing. Today I declare, I am healed. I am whole. Jesus' body, broken for me. Now receive, break it and receive healing supernaturally. Protection supernaturally unto your body right now. Healed and whole by the work of Jesus Christ. We declare that right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. All virus, all sickness, all disease we place on you at the cross. If you can, just take the juice. We're gonna hold it now. We're gonna speak over it. Say, this is the blood of Jesus shed for me, all my sin, past, present, and future has been paid for in full. I am perfect, pleasing, righteous. I have a future. I have a hope. I am not my weakness. I am not my mistakes. I am not my fears. I am not any diagnosis that has been placed on me. I am who God says I am. By His blood, I am redeemed. Now receive. Father, thank you for everyone that has received of communion right now. We speak life, wholeness into their homes, over their lives, in Jesus' name. Amen. One last thing in this time, I want to share with you the truth of God's Word around your provision. It is so important for you to connect to supernatural provision because this world is in natural chaos and nobody's provision is certain. But the Bible speaks that God is our provider. That, you know what's interesting with Jesus, there was never lack. Even though in some cases they only had a little bit of food and they had a large crowd, 20,000 people and a schoolboy's lunch, 
Jesus blesses it and it multiplies and feeds all. We want you to have provision. What God says about this is to give to your local church. What God says about this is to tithe to your local storehouse. As Redemption Church, those of us who are part of our church, they know what we believe. But for the rest of you watching, I wanna encourage you, whatever is your local church, wherever there is a church around you that you attend, or pray about a church around you, sow into that church. Give financially your tithe into that church. What is a tithe? It is 10% of your earnings. And even if you aren't earning right now, then pray about maybe sowing a seed into your local church. But I'm not telling you to give your way into poverty. I'm telling you to trust God to provide for you in a season of famine around the world. Whatever that is, however big, however small, it's about faith and trust. Give to your local church, the church where you are, that you know, that you go to, or that's around you. Pray, ask God, He'll show you a local church in your area. We are going to see the local church. Why? Because the local church is the storehouse of God and is where the blessing God wants in your life to be, is in trusting Him and getting connected to your local church. So give to them. And for so many of you, I know, I know that I know supernatural provision is about to begin because it's the first time you're gonna give. And that's amazing. So give to your local church where you are. And we're gonna just close this with a prayer. Thank you so much for being here today. I know that God is working in the midst of this chaos. Good is going to come out. God will use us for good because He's God. Father, I thank you for everyone watching that they are blessed, protected, for, provided for, that in their homes there is light, in their homes there is healing, in their homes there is provision by their heavenly Father through the work of Jesus Christ. We can lean and trust and rest in you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much for being with us today. It was an honor and privilege to host you in our Sunday service. We'll see you again soon. Until then, be blessed. Thank you so much for watching our Sunday service with us today. It was our honor and privilege to have you worshiping God together with us today. Yes, and all the information where you can get more services like this, daily devotionals and other content is available at the bottom of the screen. Until we see you again, stay safe, be blessed.